Hi, my name is Vincent and I'm with License to Kill Pest Control. Our inspector came out to this home and he did a thorough inspection and he found drywood termites. And so now we're here to fumigate the building. You can fumigate for drywood termites, rats, mice, bed bugs, powder post beetles, and other insects. But today we're here to fumigate for drywood termites. Well, we fumigate with Viking. It's a three-day process, and you could, we usually try to get you in by 12 o'clock on the third day, so we minimize your time that you have to be out of your home. And Vicane is the only way to that and heat treatment to get rid of termites or any other pest 100% guaranteed as the state would recommend it. Make sure you take all your valuables, your excessive money, loaded guns, anything that's irreplaceable, we'd like you to take it with you if possible. And make sure that you um, crack open all your, uh, your drawers in your closets. This aids in letting the gas uh, reach uh, equilibrium and getting dispersed throughout the home. Plus it helps in not letting gas get trapped in there when we go to clear it on the down. All right, now we're inside the kitchen. Yeah. We'll show you the kitchen, how you could bag your food in the refrigerator and the freezer and then put it back in. And then this way you get to save everything. It's best to, to tone down on your food. Good chance to clean your freezer out and refrigerator. Here we got the cabinets here. You can see these are the factory items that don't have to be bagged. All the drawers and the cabinets it should be open. This helps in dispersing the gas throughout the home. As you can see, if you have wine, uh, alcoholic beverages that's uh, from the manufacturer factory that's still sealed, they don't have to be double bagged at all. And these are the um, food items that have to be double bagged. You can see how one bag inside here is twisted and turned and taped. And then the second bag is twisted, turned and taped on top of that. It's best to put one bag inside the other bag before you start putting the food in there. And these are special Niaphone bags that our inspector, when he does a fume prep with you, he would give you enough bags to bag your food. And if you need more, we're always happy to come back out and give you more fume bags. And we secondary lock the door so that no one could come in except for the person in charge of the fumigation. Here we have an example of the secondary lock. This way no one could put their key in and get in. And once again, we have the fumigation notice sign on the, every door and window to ensure that everybody knows that we're doing a fumigation here. This is a, a water snake that we use to hold the tarps down to get a good ground seal. First we have sand snakes we use to hold the, the tarps down. Um, this is what weighs it down when the wind blows and it keeps the tarp in place. We try to save each plant no matter how small our system is. But we still need to get, would preferably to have a foot around all the plants in the, uh, in the building so we get a good ground cell. There we have some outdoor plants that were right against the wall and it's best to move these away from the structure that way that when we drop the tarps the tarps won't damage them and the gas won't uh, burn the plants. Here we have the gas meter and you can see where the San Diego Gas and Electric took it apart and put their little valve here and then they tagged it to, um, to let you know that they were here and they disconnected the gas. This is a, a mandate for uh, every fumigation. You used to be able to shut it off yourself with the wrench but their meters leak so this is one way to prevent it is they come out here and they do this. Now we're allowed to shut the gas off for you and so every fumigation we call and we get that scheduled ahead of time but we're not allowed to get the gas turned back on. So this is the only thing a homeowner or tenant can do is, um, is meet with them and have them turn on the gas. 
And at the completion of each fumigation, we'll leave on the door a notice of re-entry. Now you need to keep this sign when you come back home because the gas and electric people will ask you for this in order to turn the gas back on because they won't enter the house and check the gas unless they know that it's safe for re-entry. You may ask, well, can I leave my car in the garage? And the answer is yes. If you A, roll all the windows down and leave the trunk open, or B, leave the keys for us to be able to, um, to clear the car. Otherwise, it might be better just to park it on the street if you have, if you're able to. But if you're not able to move an old vehicle or some, then yeah, please open the trunk, roll down the windows, and it's safe. Here we have Viking gas. This is, um, it's a, it's a liquid, and when we put it through this hose and we disperse it into the building, it becomes a gas. That's why we have the fans in there, and the fans and the gas will mix together and the molecules will go through drywall, stucco, and penetrate the wood. The Viking gas is odorless and colorless, and so by law we have to put tear gas in here. We have a pan where we put the fluorocyclic gas. It's called the thick pan, and we put this is two stars, so we'll probably put a couple of them inside this uh, building. And we put this pick in here about 10 minutes before we shoot the gas. It'll make your eyes run, watery, you can't hardly breathe, you need to get out. And that's what it is, is a warning agent to let people know that they have to get out of the building. This is a shooting hose, and this is where the gas goes from that cylinder outside, and it comes into here, and it disperses throughout the home. And it's usually in the tap, uh, right by the fan we put it, and this way it would disperse and go throughout the home. You may wonder how we get the gas to fumigate and get throughout the home. We use fans like these, and this will shoot like 15,000 cubic foot of air throughout the home. And we place them throughout the inside of the home, which will create an equilibrium, mixing the air and the gas together for, uh, it takes about an hour for this to happen. And then within four hours, the chemical lighting gas we use to fumigate will penetrate approximately an inch into the wood. Within eight hours, we usually would go to a 4x4, 4x6 piece of wood. Within 12 hours, the gas usually will penetrate all the wood members inside the home. The Vicane gas is lighter than the air, so it naturally wants to, to leave your home. So, But we turn the fans around and we will suck the air and the gas out of the home. So within a matter, uh, within an hour, as we're taking on the tarps and stuff, the, um, the house should be free and clear of gas. And we have an inner scan, which is a, it measures the, the parts per million of the gas, and it, it will test and tell us, you know, if it's one part per gas or less, and this is what we use to clear your home. We want to make sure most of the time at the zero parts per million, but the label allows you to have one part per million for gas, which is very safe. Um, and that will also dissipate within a little bit of time. This is called the ball sink. And so what he's doing is he's getting the tarp nice and tight. And so if the wind blows, the gas won't bellow back and forth and get sucked out of the home. Okay, we recommend that you trim the, the plants back at least one foot. But in this case, you can see this palm tree took years to, to grow and we couldn't cut it back a foot. So at least an inch in some cases would be sufficient for us to slide the tarp down so that we can get the tarp in its proper place. We take our time and we have three people up here because it's a tile roof. We want to make sure that we don't do any damage to the tile roof. So someone don't have to run back and forth on your roof and we take our time, then we minimize the damage as much as possible. Okay, this is a ventilation tube, which we attach a fan to. And on the second day of the fumigation, we come back and we will turn the fan on. And we have a few of these throughout the building. And this will pull all the gas and the chlorpicrine for the next 24 hours out of the building so that when we come the next day to drop the tarps, there should be no gas left behind. But just in case there is gas, we open the doors and the windows, 
We turn the fans around to disperse any more gas that's in there out. And um, then we take an inner scan, which will measure parts per million of the gas and make sure that there's no gas left in the home for you to enter the home safely. This is a re-entry notice. After we test the gas uh, with our inner scan and determine there's no gas in there, we'll post one of these on the door and on the meter. And you should keep the one inside just in case this one gets blown away or anything, but this will let the gas company know that it's safe, um, the house is free of gas, and they could reconnect your gas and turn it back on for you. And we have a two-year warranty, and after the two-year warranty is up, we'd like to come back every year and do an annual control service that we offer as part of our fumigation program to ensure your home is free and clear of termites year after year after year. Because after we take the tarp down, termites could reinfest your home the very next day. So we want to make sure that we have a plan in place for you so that you don't have to keep doing this year after year. So this is one of the methods we use is uh, we come out every year and we inspect the property and make sure that you're termite free.